and welcome back to Julia in the Garden. It is early March here in Vermont and so there's not a lot I'm doing yet outside uh, but I'm inside today starting some seeds. So today in this video we're going to start some herb seeds. Mostly culinary herbs and these will mostly be going in my potager but if I have some extras and I plan on having some extras I'm hoping to stick a few in other places as well. Okay, so I have a bunch of different varieties and some of these are annual and some are perennial. I have grown several of these from seed before and some I have had more or less success on. Cilantro is one I have direct sown outside and that works pretty well, but it really does need to be succession sown. Once you cut some, it doesn't really come back again. And so I am going to start some, just a few, inside and then start that succession going and also you can let this go to seed and get coriander now i believe in other places in the world they just call this plant coriander and you have like the cor fresh coriander leaf and then the coriander seeds here in the united states for some reason we call the leaf cilantro and we call the seeds coriander so i will be growing some either way my kids are around so you're just gonna hear some things they're fine and playing <laughs> then i have a german thyme which is just like a nice dark green thyme and that one's a perennial and I have grown this from seed before and I have some still out in my garden that should come back but I feel like a lot of these perennial herbs it's good to refresh them every few years. Then we have common sage, it's just your garden sage um, so it's that's a great thing to dry especially for you know Thanksgiving Christmas time here in the states we like our sage. Uh, also a perennial and I have grown it before. Then some oregano and I have grown this one before as well. This is also a perennial here. Um, mine has gotten a little overgrown with weeds, so it's been harder to harvest. So <laughs> we're gonna start that one fresh. Uh, marjoram is very similar to oregano. It's a little bit of a brighter flavor. I'm not, herbs are hard to describe. They just like kind of are what they are. You have to try them and I can't really describe them <laughs> without just saying, oh, it just tastes like oregano, you know? Okay, this one's, uh, I had the seed and I didn't, grow any last year so I'm gonna try it again this year this is summer savory and so it's supposed to be like a uh, similar to thyme um, but it says it's a uh, bright thyme and pink peppercorn flavor um, so that sounds fun so we'll try that and this one I'm not sure if it will be perennial for me or not it may just be an annual up here for me in zone 5 and uh, but I'll probably leave it and just see what happens okay now dill, this is a green sleeves dill, so it's supposed to not bolt as quickly. And I've usually direct sown dill, um, but I'm going to, again, just like the cilantro, I'm gonna try starting a few inside this year and see how that goes. And then I'll probably also direct sow some into the garden. Then I've got giant Italian parsley, which is like the, it's flat leaves parsley. So you might see like some curled leaves, some flat leaves. I prefer the flat leaves. This is an annual for me as well. And then this is one, this is cumin. And this is one you'll often find it, it uh, ground, like you could use ground cumin in meals, which, which I do. And I thought I would just try it. It's, <laughs> I think it's gonna end up being an annual for me. I have tried to direct sow it before and have not had great success with that. So this year I'm just gonna try starting it inside and see what happens. Worst that happens, it doesn't work. So I have the seed, let's, let's give it a go. And then this last one, I don't think is really classified as a culinary herb, but I'm throwing it in here and it's lemon balm. You could use it in uh, meals and I haven't really. I usually use it for tea and I love the smell of it, but if you have any ideas of using lemon balm in meals, I think maybe desserts might be delicious. Uh, let me know. Now that I've shared with you all of the herbs we will be starting today, let me just share with you my setup a little bit. I have a giant tub of soil on the floor next to me that I prepped earlier. I am using Gardener Supply Potting Soil. You can use seed starting soil. I have found that um, it's been a little bit more expensive for me and the potting soil, this particular potting soil I get, is actually just as light for the most part as a lot of the seed starting mixes I was getting. Um, and uh, it, I, if there's big clumps, I just take any, like any sticks or anything, I just take that out as I'm going. And then um, I did boil it. Now, there was an interesting discussion about this in a group that I'm part of recently, and I just want to explain why there was a discussion and what my thoughts are. So, the reason I boil my soil when I'm starting seeds is to kill any eggs of fungus gnats, 
and also like any other bugs that are in there. Now I'm not 100% sure if it gets rid of anything for like the, the bacteria or fungus for dampening off, but I think it does kill a lot of things that could be bad. Now the downside of this and why there is a debate is it can also kill and probably will also kill a lot of the good living things and bacteria and things that are in your soil that you bought. So if you're buying potting mix, it usually has some good stuff added to it. And so you may not want to boil it because then you'd be getting rid of that good stuff in there. Now, here's what I decided. Um, I have struggled with fungus gnats and there's, I may be struggling with a little bit of damping off. I'm keeping an eye on it um, this year. And so I'm trying to be extra cautious I have like gone back and sanitized like all of the supplies I'm using, all of my seed trays and stuff have gone through like a vinegar soak, like washed with soap and water vinegar soak, all that. So I'm trying to be extra cautious. So for starting my seeds, I am boiling right now. Now something important if you are doing that is I do actually add some nutrition back into the soil. I added some worm casting, so that helps kind of counteract the fact that I killed the other things in there. But the other thing is that seed starting mix doesn't actually usually have much stuff. When you're first starting your seeds, the nutrition that the plant needs is in the seed itself. So that's really cool. When I'm potting up, I will not be boiling my mix. At that point, my hope is my seedlings are a little bit stronger, they've grown some, some good roots, that they'll be able to withstand any little fungus gnat pressure and other pressure they get from other things going on in the soil. Um, I also have other measures I'm taking against the fungus gnats and such. I can talk about that in a later video, but that's my thought process as to why I am boiling. You can decide what's going to work best for you. So I did boil my soil. I waited for it to cool because I don't want to stick my seeds in really hot soil. And then I added worm castings and a little bit more water because it wasn't quite as moist as I liked it. I do think it is important to pre-moisten your soil when you are starting seeds. It's hard to get the water in there uh, to the extent that it needs to be when it's completely dry without washing seeds away and getting them deeper than you want them to be. So I do pre-moisten and you want them, you want it to stay kind of in a clump like that without, you know, you don't want like water, a lot of water dripping out. So that's kind of what I'm going for there. So that's my soil. I'm then using these seed trays. I also have tags and a garden marker. Um, this is kind of a variety of different tags, but most of what I have in here are actually yogurt containers because uh, my kids and I love yogurt. <laughs> so I get the big yogurt containers and I just cut them and I cut it with like a little point at the end to use as tags so that I'm reusing and not buying new plastic tags. Now as I'm filling these up, I'm gonna talk you through it a bit here. Grab some soil. So I'm pulling out any sticks and such like this. To be honest, recently I was finding these in seed starting mix as well. So, you know, it's not that hard to just pull them out. I like to, as I'm going, just gently push it down. So if you don't push it down, one, you're cheating your seedling out of soil that it would otherwise have access to in here. And two, if you have, uh, like if I don't push it down, if you have, let me see if I can make this, kind of show you. You have this, like this, right? You don't have as much soil in it. And then when you water it, it's going to go down a bit. And so all of a sudden, your seedling's down there. <laughs> That's not what you want. So you want to just kind of gently push down as you go to make sure that the soil is packed in in a nice way. So I just, I just do that a couple times. I'm just gonna go ahead and fill up um, at least some of these containers before I get started with the seeds. Any big pieces that I'm throwing over there are gonna go in my compost. some seeds now. So I'm going to start with sage, my common garden sage, and I have a label, a tag that's very important. Um, many gardeners have had the experience of thinking you know what you planted and you're going to remember and then you don't. So there's that. I have also had young children switch and remove tags on me, so that's fun. 
I did use my garden marker. Um, this is just the one I found. There may be other brands, I don't know. <laughs> um, this one I got and it works for me. I use this instead of a Sharpie or something else like that because I found that it holds up to the weather better. Like even though Sharpies are supposed to be permanent, often when it rains or even snows, sometimes, sometimes when I'm putting my plants out, they could be out there in the snow. Um, this holds up much better. So, label, there we go. Now if you're a beginner at starting seeds, welcome. <laughs> it's so much fun. The general rule at planting depth is to not plant deeper than the seed is big. Now I probably just grabbed way too many seeds. This is an older packet, so I'm gonna sow it pretty heavily. It's four years old. Um, but you don't like you don't need to use seeds from that same year or anything. They will last a while if they're kept, you know, dry and usually in a darker place is better. These are my sage seeds. Get a good look of them there. Let's see if I can. They're like little balls. Um, so these ones will go deeper than, they're, they're bigger than most of the other herbs I'm planting. So I'm just gonna make like a little, little divot, I suppose there. Like a little nest for them to sit in. And like I said, I'm sewing um, somewhat heavily here. Usually I would put like two in just to make sure um, if I had enough seeds. If, I, if it's something I don't have a lot of seeds or it's really expensive seeds, I'd probably just do one. Um, but in this case, I'm going to do, I think, three in each. And then if if, um, if a cell doesn't come up completely, like if none of the three come up, I can always re-sew it. And as I was saying, you don't want to put them deeper than they are big. So this is about as deep as they're going. I'm just going to cover them back over. Now I like to cover the top after I've put the soil back over with a thin layer of vermiculite. Um, sometimes this is mixed into soil to make it lighter. It's from, I believe, a volcanic rock, if I'm remembering correctly. And it just, it what what it, the reason I'm putting it on the top is it helps hold in moisture. So yeah, and, and it's very light. So it's not adding a lot of density that the seeds are gonna have to work through. I do even put it on top when I surface sow seeds, seeds that need light. I put a really thin layer on the light. It's enough that the light can still get through, but it helps hold the moisture in, and I found that it decreases the amount of algae and mold that I get on the top of my soil. And then I have this spray bottle of water. I had was misting some other plants, so I had moved it on myself. But yeah, it's just a spray bottle, just regular water, and I'm just gonna go ahead and spray it to make sure that the seeds and the soil around the seeds are moist and settled. There we go. And we stick the tag in. And then this is going to go on one of my deep trays. They'll all go on the tray together and then when I finished with these, they'll all go on a grow light shelf under the lights. Let's do time next. So might be coming in just that one window on me. <laughs> Sorry for the weird lighting. I'm going to I'm going to make my label. Now, thyme seeds are very tiny. They are a type of seed, you can see if I can show you, they're very small. They're a type of seed that does not like being buried under the soil. They need light to germinate. So I'm just going to sprinkle a little bit on top. I'm gonna to make sure before I do that that this is like all kind of firmed down here. We do wanna um, make sure it has you know, good contact with the soil. So after I sprinkle a little bit on each cell here, I'm going to just pat down just to make sure that it has that soil contact. And then I do, again, put vermiculite on top. I just do a light layer and I found that it works really well 
to you know, keep the seeds in place there. And the light layer of vermiculite allows this, the light to get through enough for them to germinate. There are several types of plants that do like to have light to germinate. A lot of herbs and flowers that you think of that reseed easily in your garden. A lot of the tiny ones, um, snapdragons, I generally don't put underneath. But then a lot of the herbs, I'm trying to think of exactly which ones. <laughs> and they're not, maybe I'll list some here in the description box below. Um, but there's quite a few that, uh, and when in doubt, if it's a small seed, just sprinkle it on the top and it's probably gonna prefer that. That's two done, several more to go. I know that uh, I have a few more here. I have the oregano and so I'm guessing also the marjoram and the lemon balm also does not like to be buried underneath. I will sew that on the surface. And most of these other ones will just go under a little bit because they're not super huge seeds. All right, let's get the rest of these sewed. from a few days later here there were just a couple notes I wanted to add after you get your seeds under the lights first of all herbs can take a while to germinate so be patient they're not a good seed for instant gratification if you will some of them can take even up to several weeks and sometimes there's spotty germination on them so again just be patient some of them may come up fast I find the annuals generally come up faster things like the cilantro so that's great but for the most part be patient. While you're waiting, you do want to try to keep the seeds moist. 
Uh, it can be a problem if the seed starts to germinate and then dries out because they can die. So one really easy way to do that is to put a humidity dome over it. So after you, you know, before you put them on the shelf, after you've got them all in their tray, you can find humidity domes to fit on top. If you don't have that, you can use like any sort of like clear, uh, clear plastic thing. Again, some of these do need light to germinate, so you don't want to cover it with something not transparent. <laughs> um, but if you have like, if you get like the salad and those like clamshell things that are clear, things like that, those can even work. Um, so you can use what you have. You don't have to buy something pricey. I do have a few humidity domes that I use sometimes. Um, other, otherwise, what I do is I'm home all day, so I have the luxury of being able to go check on my seeds and seedlings several times a day. And I have my spray bottle, you know, the same one, the same one I was using when we started the seeds. And I will go around and just like spray the tops of any that look like they're getting dry, just to make sure the seeds stay moist. And I'll stop doing that once the seedlings have emerged and have their first leaves, which are not their true leaves, but their, their cotyledons are what they called with their little um, first leaves. And along that vein, I don't do full watering of the trays of the plants until after most or all of the seedlings have come up. Unless, you know, if you have some that have come up really fast and are pretty big and then others haven't come up yet, you can water and it will be okay. But you don't need the soil to be fully saturated all the way through regularly. In fact, that can encourage things like fungus gnats and you know other fungus and mold and stuff. So it's best to, in general, especially when the seedlings are up, let it dry out between waterings. But again, with the caveat, don't let your seeds dry out. So it's kind of a tricky balance, but generally I wait until most or all have come up. In the meantime, I'll use the spray bottle just to do some surface quick on the spot watering if I need to. And then I bottom water which simply means that I, you know, lift up a tray and I pour water into the bottom of the, the bottom tray, which does not have holes. And the, the roots and the soil will suck up the water. And that's really, I found the best way to do it if you can. I have made several videos on seed starting, including at least one video on like a tour of my seedlings and a seed starting setup from past year. And that included, you know, information and links to the different supplies that I am using. So I will make sure that that's linked here and you can check that out. The trays that you did see me using, the little cell trays as well as the bottom, they're called 1020 trays, uh, I did get from Bootstrap Farmer and I do really like their products. They're like heavy duty, they're made in the USA and they can last for many, many years. So if you wanna make an investment in these things, that's a good way to go. Otherwise, you can really use stuff that you can find or you have around your house. You just need a container that has drainage holes for the plants, the soil and plants to go in, and then something that doesn't have holes, a tray of some sort to go underneath them. So I've seen people be really creative and use lots of different things. So I just put that out there. You don't need the fancy equipment, but I will link Bootstrap Farmer below in case you are interested. They also have pretty colors, so. That's a bonus for me. Once these have gotten a little bit bigger, usually I wait until I can see roots coming out of the bottom. I will pot them up into a larger size pot. It is important, unless you can get it out into your garden really fast, um, it is important to pot them up or they can get stunted. I had that experience with some things last year where um, I had some plants that were kept in the tiny cell trays until I planted them out and other ones of the same variety that I potted up and the ones I potted up did infinitely better. So again, unless you're getting them in relatively quickly when they're at the right stage, it is important to pot them up. Many of these perennials, uh, the thyme, the sage and such, can go in, can can handle some frost once they are established. So you need, you know, a decent root system on them. And you know, you don't want to stick them in when they're just teeny tiny. They're not going to do as well. But after, you know, a month or two of growth, if it's still not your last frost date, which it won't be mine probably when I put them out, then you can plant them when there's still some light frost in the forecast and they should be fine. Now, things like the cumin um, and I'm not sure about the dill. I'd have to check on the dill. I will wait until after my last frost is well done to stick them out there. But perennials like the thyme and the sage, um, even the lemon balm are, are really, really pretty hardy. And so you can stick them out several weeks before your last frost and they should be okay. And I will try to take you through the process of my herb garden this year. I really want to make it a focus. And I will also be picking up 
some herbs at local nurseries. There's one in particular that grows a great selection of organic herbs and um, so I will be picking up some varieties there as I work to fill out my herb beds more. If that's content that you want to make sure you see, make sure you subscribe below and also click that thumbs up if you liked this video. It does really help me out. I also really want to know what is your favorite herb or spice. There's a little bit of a distinction, but I'm not 100% sure what it is. So go ahead and comment below what your favorite herb is. I would really like to know. And until next time, I hope you are all happy and healthy and well and have some time to play with some plants. Happy gardening, friends.